On the 17th of January 1949, a plane known as the Star Ariel departed Bermuda for Kingston, Jamaica. An hour into the flight, the pilot made a routine transmission with no indication of alarm, but the plane was never seen or heard from again. There was no evidence of a crash and no distress call had been transceived. The weather was excellent for the entire duration of the flight. The pilot and his crew was highly experienced and had flown this specific route many times before, and the plane was in working condition prior to departure. A succeeding investigation failed to determine a probable cause due to a lack of evidence. But what makes this even more mysterious is that a sister plane known as the Star Tiger had vanished under similar circumstances the year before. On January the 30th, 1948, the Star Tiger disappeared while approaching Bermuda from the east. The pilot and the rest of the crew were highly experienced, but the weather was not ideal with strong winds and heavy rain. The strong winds had blown the plane off course just an hour before their last transmission and they were never seen or heard from again. The succeeding investigation concluded, in closing this report, it may truly be said that no more baffling problem has ever been presented for investigation. What happened in this case will never be known, and the fate of Star Tiger must remain an unsolved mystery. But even in information-deprived cases like these, natural explanations do exist. For example, the accident report of the Star Tiger revealed that the plane had been poorly maintained and known defects remained unrectified. Subsequent investigations also found that this particular type of airplane had a heater in the cabin that was prone to malfunction and due to poor design, there was a chance of combustion and explosion. Two pilots experienced with this type of aircraft believed this was a real possibility and one of them stated, My theory is that hydraulic vapor escaped from a leak which got onto a hot heater and caused an explosion. Perhaps one of the most mysterious incidents is that of the five-masted sailing vessel Carol A. Deering. On January the 9th, 1921, the Deering departed the island of Barbados and set sail for Norfolk, Virginia. Less than three weeks later, the ship was sighted by a lightship near the coast of North Carolina and the lightship's engineer took this photograph as she passed by. The person at the helm of the Deering hailed the lightship and used a megaphone to inform them that they had lost both their anchors. The ship then progressed up the coast towards Norfolk, but she never arrived. Two days after the sighting by the lightship keepers, the Deering was located by the Coast Guard. The ship had run aground in an area known as the Diamond Shoals and appeared to have been abandoned. This was confirmed once the ship was boarded a few days later and the ship's log, the crew's personal belongings, key navigational equipment, various documents, two lifeboats, as well as the ship's two anchors were found to be missing. Furthermore, the steering wheel and other equipment also appeared to have been intentionally destroyed with a sledgehammer. There was no sign of the 11 crewmen and they have never been seen or heard from since. A few months later, a man named Christopher Columbus Gray discovered a message in a bottle not far from the wreckage and it reads as follows. Daring captured by oil burning ship, something like a chaser, taking off everything, handcuffing crew, crew hiding all over ship, no chance of escape, finder please notify headquarters of Daring. The message was perceived to be genuine and thus it was presumed that the crew of the Carol A. Daring had fallen victim to piracy. But then, a few months after that, handwriting experts proved that Gray himself had written the message and that the entire thing was a hoax. But Gray may not have been too far off as there is evidence to suggest that a mutiny took place. The US State Department issued a statement at the time in which they wrote, there is every suspicion of foul play. First of all, the person who hailed the lightship was not the captain. He was described by the lightship keeper as a red-headed man with a Scandinavian accent. So, me without a soul. While this description could not have been that of the captain, it was descriptive of the other crewmen, most of which were Danes. Which of course only strengthens the possibility of mutiny. 
Secondly, later investigations found that the relationship between the captain and the crew was strenuous at best. Prior to departing Barbados, both the captain and the first mate spoke ill of each other and the captain was concerned that the crew might turn on him. The first mate had also requested a ship of his own and when this request was denied, he boasted that he would get the captain before they reached their destination. The first mate was subsequently arrested because of this but was later bailed out by the captain himself who forgave him for what he'd said. So, there's plenty of evidence to suspect a mutiny. Nevertheless, this cannot fully explain why the ship was subsequently abandoned or why the crew disappeared so completely. But it gets even stranger. Soon after the Deering had passed the lightship, yet another vessel appeared. It was a large steamship painted black, roughly sailing in the wake of the Deering. When the lightship hailed the vessel, not only was the hail ignored, but the crewmen unfurled a canvas to cover the ship's nameplate before speeding away. Some have speculated that this could have been the American steamship SS Hewitt that vanished around the same time, but unless further evidence can be unraveled, there is no way to know. So perhaps Grey was unintentionally correct. Perhaps the mysterious vessel was indeed a pirate ship chasing down the Deering. Or perhaps the crew conspired to commit mutiny. In either case, numerous elements are, at best, difficult to explain. This is the Cotopaxi. <laughs> it's a great name, huh? <laughs> it was a 250-foot-long cargo steamship that was sailing in 1925 from Charleston, South Carolina to Havana. But on that voyage, it vanished. It and its entire 32-person crew just disappeared. What happened is that the ship kind of became part of the Bermuda Triangle myth. The place in the Atlantic Ocean where ships and planes just slip away. It was also the ship in the movie Close Encounters of the Third Kind found in the desert. There is that scene where there's this old rusting freighter in the middle of a desert and you see the name Cotopaxi on, uh, on its hull. But federal scientist and diver Mike Barnett suspected the Cotopaxi was actually a shipwreck that many First Coast locals refer to as the Bear Wreck, 35 miles off of St. Augustine. Barnett asked some shipwreck experts, such as Chuck Mead at the St. Augustine Lighthouse Archaeological Marine Program, to go to the site with him for a second opinion. So the wreck divers got a measuring tape, and they measured parts of the ship, and those measurements matched up with the vessel's blueprint. We're pretty convinced we have compelling evidence this is the Cotopaxi. Mystery solved. So what happened to the ship in 1925? Research shows it was a poorly maintained ship and... And unbeknownst to the captain and crew, uh, they were sailing right into the mouth of a tropical storm. So all this time, the Cotopaxi was famous for its Bermuda Triangle connection and movie stardom when it turns out... And it's been right here off our coast. Fear, fishermen.